Before talking about the city structure and showing the models, I am going to discuss the concepts and theories that I will implicate in my city. For this, there are six categories I will mention. The first category is power and energy. First, I will be using a process that is currently being used at a small scale, bioproduction of ethanol fuels. In this process, yeast is engineered to consume the sugar and give out fuel. This picture shows the process of how ethanol fuels are generated. This is an efficient process because seven times the energy put into growing the sugar cane is gained from the fuels. This fuel is what I will use to run all airplanes in my city and it will also be used as a backup power source for the city and all the vehicles in it. The main power source of the city is still a theory in development, space-based solar plants. Solar panels are sent into space via satellites. These solar panels collect solar energy and turn them back to Earth via microwave beams. In my city, there will be receivers that will turn these beams back into electricity and disperse them across the city. The picture you can see depicts a receiver. This will create enough energy to run the city because solar panels are 10 times more efficient in space due to there being no seasonal variations and day-night cycles. The next category is travel and transportation. All cars will be driverless in order to reduce the human error factor and accidents. All cars will be connected to one central system. It will compress the distance between cars to mere centimeters in order to use road space more efficiently. It will also operate the cars in a platoon formation which drives cars in one straight line to reduce air drag. Once the car nears its destination, it would detach from the platoon to drive to its destination. When cars are being driven individually, the central system will use sonar and radar to map its surroundings and make calculated decisions while driving. All cars will also be electricity powered due to the efficiency of my primary power source. All lanes will be electric charging lanes. They will make use of the same mechanism as the space-based solar plant because the lanes will emit energy and the cars will receive and convert the energy. There will also only be one form of public transport in the city. From my personal experience and in my opinion, the metro is the most efficient public transport system. It can be entirely powered by electricity, it emits zero gas, and it's also the fastest form of public transport in current time. I will show a metro map of the city later in the video. As mentioned before, I will keep using planes for long-distance human transport. However, I have a new plan for long-distance cargo transport, the ultra-fast tube network. It is similar to a metro, with the only difference being that the tube is shot instead of being driven the entire way. The tube can be shot at speeds of up to 6,500 kilometers per hour, making it very quick, efficient, and it also consumes very less power. I also have a different plan for cargo transport within the city, in the form of unmanned drones. These drones are also connected to a central system that digitally maps the drone's surroundings and makes decisions while traveling to its destination. The next category is buildings and infrastructure. As you can see, this is the plan of an average building in the future. I will use a few features mentioned on this plan for all of my buildings. I will occasionally be using the water collection and recycling system on the roof. The roofs will mainly consist of rooftop gardens. I will use robotic cleaning and maintenance systems accompanied by food production robots. The maintenance systems will monitor building conditions and repair any damaged areas. The connector bridges will be used in one section of the city, with the difference being that they will not be pedestrian, but they will be for transportation pods. Each building will have the building membrane, which converts carbon dioxide to oxygen. There will be an insulation material within the membrane to reduce energy consumption for heating. As mentioned before, there will be many central systems operating different aspects of the city. All of the central systems will be operating through two different nerve centers in the city. There will be one for each half of the city due to the size. These buildings will be designed to avert disasters such as earthquakes and fires. On the screen, you can see the anti-earthquake mechanism. The buildings will have seismic sensors. When they detect dangerous activity, they activate the air compressors that force air between the building and its foundation. This layer of air can lift the building up to 3 centimeters off of the foundation out of the earthquake. The building's fireproofing mechanisms will mainly consist of fire resistance glass and gypsum, a fireproof ceiling and wall material. The next category is waste management and recycling. First, I will deal with plastic waste. Plastic waste will be transported to centers where they will be pounded into pellets for 3D printing. Since it is eco-friendly, this can be used to create, for example, furniture. Another way of dealing with plastic is plastic-eating worms. The worm population will be developed in worm farms. The worms biodegrade the plastic and their waste can be used as fertilizer for rooftop gardens. Now, I will deal with normal waste. This waste can be turned into electricity by a process called gasification. The waste is baked to create a gas that turns turbines, 
which in turn generate electricity. All biodegradable waste will be used as fertilizers for rooftop gardens and sugarcane plants. The next category is food and water. The water source, a very efficient one, is atmospheric water harvesters. This will be the number one water source for the city. These harvesters are engineered to condense water vapor and make the water potable. This is an efficient process because at any given point, there is roughly 140,000 trillion liters of water in Earth's atmosphere. The main food source, which has been mentioned many times earlier in this video, is rooftop gardens. With all the fertilizer it will receive, there will be no problem in making it the city's main food source, especially because all the conditions are controlled via greenhouse type structures on the buildings. There will be two secondary food sources. One is insect farming. Although it may seem disgusting to some, there are at least 1,400 species of insects edible to man. If all goes wrong, this may very well be the only possible food source. The other secondary source is lab-grown meat. This is not very efficient, but can still be made efficient. There is room for improvement in any aspect because the city is located well into the future. The last category is identity and essentials. Although this is not a major part of the city, it plays a huge part in the residents' daily lives. This will come in the form of microchip implants. All the currency will be digital, so all of one's money would be stored in the microchip. This drastically reduces the possibility of crime due to the shutdown mechanism. For example, if the chip is surgically removed. The chip contains everything from currency, passports, identity, working permits, and transportation cards to your home and vehicle keys. This makes everything accessible with the swipe of a hand. This is the map. I have divided the entire city into different sectors. This is because, in my opinion, a city works well when it is organized like a human body. Each part has its own function. I want the residential sector in the middle to make sure that the other sectors were quick and easy to access for the residents. The most useful sectors to the residents are located nearest, such as the retail and shopping sector and software law and financial job sector. Each family has its own needs from the shopping sector, and software law and finance are the biggest job industries in current time, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. The other less popular sectors are located towards the outside of the city. The means of long-distance transport, such as the ultra-fast tube network and the airport, are located in the outer section, so as not to waste space in the middle of the city. I will show what a scaled-down real-life example of each sector would look like using Minecraft. By scaled down, I mean there would be only one of each building type. I will specify the building type and the approximate number in the sector wherever needed. This is the metro map. Keep in mind that the metro map is at the same scale as the city map. In fact, I traced the metro map from the city map to ensure the scaling was exact. I placed each metro stop wherever I felt necessary. The number of metro stops for each sector was determined by the need to travel there and the size of the sector itself. Therefore, I have six metro stops within the residential sector itself. All metros will stop at the city center because it is the transport hub for the entire city. There will also be metro links to and from the airport and the ultra-fast tube network. There is also a legend for the names of each of the metro lines to the left of the map. All the black dots where there is black text signify metro stops. This is my residential sector and city center model. Here, you can see the city center buildings. I have marked three buildings as section B, A, and C of the city center. Also, keep in mind that the green lines on the ground are the roads. Here, we can see a few apartment buildings. There will be approximately 2,000 apartment buildings, each with a capacity of 500 for a total capacity of 1 million residents. Here, I have built a park. I have built this because I am trying to promote a healthy population. Here, I have a supermarket for minor purposes with an emergency helipad. Here, we can see a kindergarten through grade 12 school. There will be approximately 500 schools, each with a capacity of 1,000 children for the 500,000 children in the city. Here is an emergency hospital with an emergency parking space as well. Here are a few other larger apartment buildings, also each with a capacity of 500. There will be approximately 1,500 of these larger buildings. The only difference between these and the other high-rise apartments are that the apartment size is bigger here. Also note that 
All of these structures on top of the buildings are rooftop gardens with the greenhouse structures as I mentioned before. Here is one of the buildings that has the water collection system. This is my software, law, and financial job sector along with the Nerve Center A. Here we can see the Nerve Center A. There is one significant difference between this sector and all of the other sectors. There are no roads. Here we can see a car parking hub. All civilians will leave their vehicles here and travel to their respective office buildings via these pod bridges that you can see right here. These are all office buildings. Again, all of these buildings have rooftop gardens along with the occasional few that have these water collection systems. This is my energy plant and fuel manufacturing sector. Here we can see a bamboo greenhouse plant. As the name suggests, Bamboo is grown here under controlled conditions for fuel production. Here we can see solar energy receivers as mentioned from the space-based power plant. They receive microwave beams, convert them to energy, and disperse them across the city. Here we can see the atmospheric water harvester. As previously mentioned, this is the primary water source. This is my technological manufacturing and industrial work sector. Here we can see a fuel conversion factory. This is where the bamboo is transported and then converted into ethanol fuel. Here we can see a drone manufacturing factory. As drones are the primary means of cargo transportation within the city, there needs to be a st steady supply of drones to keep the city functional. Most of the other technologies will be imported through the ultra-fast tube network. Now, this is a model of the retail and shopping sector, scientific development sector, and the nerve center B. Right here, we can see the Nerve Center B. Here, there are four identical buildings that signify shops in the shopping sector. First, there is a furniture store. Second, there is a clothing store. Third, there is an electronic store. And four, there is a building for other types of stores. I feel that I have identified the biggest sections in the shopping industry with these four buildings. And now, here we have the scientific development sector. Here, we have an insect farm. As I mentioned before, insects will be integrated into the human diet. Here, we have a technological development building to develop, for example, new softwares. Here, we have a building for biological experimentation. This building will mainly be used by university students for a wider range of lab apparatus. Here, we have a waste management development building. This place will research new methods of dealing with waste. Here, we have a building that works mainly on the lab-grown food. As I mentioned before, it is also one of the secondary food sources. This is the governmental job sector. Here, we have an embassy. Obviously, this is not the only one. There will be many more embassies from different countries in this area. Here, we have an intercity government building. This could be, for example, our parliament, assuming that the city is the capital of the country it is located in. Here, we have a court. Here, we have a law enforcement office. This office will use predictive algorithms to predict crime and terrorism in order to prevent them. Here, we do have a fire station. However, this is only for emergencies. With the amount of fireproofing mechanisms for each building, it will hardly ever be used. This is the higher education sector. As the name suggests, this sector will consist of universities and colleges. This is the main university building where all of the studying takes place. Here, we have the student dorms. Although the city is well into the future, I do not want to remove the authentic and independent experience of being in university. Here is a supermarket facility mainly for food. As mentioned before, the university students will use various facilities around the city for their purposes, such as the biological experimentation lab, so as not to crowd the higher education sector. There will be approximately five universities, each with the capacity of 200,000 students for a total capacity of approximately 1 million university students. This is the waste management sector. Here, we have a plastic ink facility. Plastic waste is brought here and pounded into ink for 3D printers. The ink is then transported to this facility where it is used to print, for example, furniture. Here is a worm farm. As mentioned before, plastic eating worms are one of the ways to deal with plastic. The warm waste is used as fertilizer. Here is a gasification plant. 
Normal waste is brought here and gasified to generate fuel that can later be configured to ethanol fuel. This is the airport. As mentioned before, all airplanes will run on ethanol fuel. This is the airport building, and here we can see a runway. The airport building will also have a rooftop garden. This is the ultrafast tube network. As mentioned before, this is for all long distance cargo transport. Here we can see a section of the underground tube rail. Here is the cargo hold.